While a traditional Fallout game hasn't hit the Nintendo Switch yet for some reason, and Bethesda is busy with awesome projects like Fallout 76, Obsidian, the team behind Fallout New Vegas, decided to create their own Fallout-style game for the modern platforms that released last year called The Outer Worlds. Now, this game released on the PC, Xbox One, and PS4, but shortly after releasing, a Nintendo Switch version of the game was announced, which honestly got me very excited. Yes, I could have played the game on Game Pass or my Xbox One, or I could have purchased it on the PS4, but honestly, I have wanted a Fallout-style game for the Nintendo Switch, well, pretty much since the Nintendo Switch was released. Now, I ended up getting a review copy of the game to check out, so how did the Outer Worlds end up on the Nintendo Switch, and was it worth my personal wait with the game? What's up, guys? I'm RGT85. If this is your first time on the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. But without any further ado, let's jump into the Outer Worlds on Nintendo Switch and see if you could potentially become obsessed with this game like, well, sort of how I am. Now let's get the elephant in the room out of the way and talk about the graphics for the Outer Worlds for the Nintendo Switch, because obviously I've been showing you gameplay footage from the Switch version already. Now Virtuos is the team behind the Outer Worlds port for the Nintendo Switch, and originally the game looked pretty good on the Xbox One and PS4. I wouldn't say it was anything too groundbreaking or anything like that, but it definitely had a proper Fallout style visual, and it had an interesting and dynamic world to traverse with tons of different creatures and enemies to encounter. Now, Virtuos has gone on record as stating they feel they can port literally any game to the Nintendo Switch. And I guess technically you can, but the Outer Worlds on Nintendo Switch in terms of visual fidelity definitely has some downgrades versus the Xbox One version of the game. Now, my buddy Brett from Nintendo Enthusiast sent me over some of these comparison shots of the Nintendo Switch version versus the Xbox One version because, well, my Xbox One is pretty much full on memory space. But there's obviously a very clear difference between the two versions of the game. If you want to see a more in-depth look at this, be sure to check out Brett's video over on Nintendo Enthusiast channel. I'll have a link in the description box down below. Now, there's lots of foliage and environmental things such as the sky, which have been altered or just removed. The color palette seems a bit duller on the Nintendo Switch, and the textures are obviously muddier. Now, I'm sure you're saying, well, RGT, it's hardly fair to compare it to the Xbox One version of the game when the Switch is a weaker system. And I would say that you're correct, but I just wanted to showcase some of the compromises made on the Nintendo Switch version. Now, like I said, I had no previous playthrough with this game, so it was my first time seeing and experiencing it in action. And even judging it solely as a Nintendo Switch title, I would still say it's not the prettiest game when you compare it to something like Skyrim or Witcher 3 on the Nintendo Switch, which are open world style games as well. Virtua said that they are targeting 1080p 30 frames per second in docked mode, which is what the footage that's being shown is recorded at, and 720p 30 frames per second in handheld mode. But you're gonna encounter quite a bit of pop-up, some odd loading screens that just occasionally appear out of nowhere in more open areas, and lots of textures rendering and getting clear as you approach them. I will say that the frame rate does a decent enough job of staying consistent, but I did notice a few dips in sometimes with that as well. When you're inside various buildings or structures, the game does seem to fare a bit better than in the more open areas and cities in terms of visual fidelity. When in handheld mode, the game does get a bit blurrier as well, almost reminding me a bit of how Wolfenstein 2 on the Nintendo Switch looked when you played that in handheld mode. Now even after saying all that, I personally adjusted to the graphical style of the game on the Nintendo Switch, and I was fine with it because really, it just kind of looked like Fallout 3 did on the Xbox 360, but with more colors. And I ended up sinking well over 25 hours into this game in just, well, two days with it. It is possible that a future patch could come along to improve the graphics of the game and maybe sharpen them up a bit, but this is how the game stands as of now, so I have to take it as what it is. Now, if the game isn't the prettiest game in the world, why have I sunk so much time into the Outer Worlds already? Because the actual game is phenomenal and exactly what I wanted on my Nintendo Switch. The overarching story of the Outer Worlds has you playing as a character named The Stranger, who is saved off of a ship called The Hope by a scientist named Phineas Wells. Wells wants to save other people on the Hope as well, but in order to do that, he needs you to go to the Halcyon Colony and gather various resources and try to combat the Board, which is essentially mega corporations who run the area in the Halcyon District. Now, since this is a Fallout style game, the rest of the story is pretty much up to you, as you are often tasked with quests that make you question both the Board and Wells, so you're free to decide how you want to play the game in that manner. You create your character to your liking in terms of visual style, and then visit various planets in the Halcyon Galaxy doing different tasks, ranging from main story ones to side quests. 
One thing I absolutely loved about side quests in games like Fallout 3 were just how some of them told an individual story in a very interesting manner, and The Outer Worlds is full of smaller quests like that. From taking out marauders in an area, to investigating a murder, to being stuck in a house ran by a cult. I have found so many fun side quests in this game that just give me such a high level of satisfaction and curiosity, I never knew what to expect next in terms of the storytelling. Of course, while you're traversing the Halcyon colony, you will encounter various types of enemies in the game, and the game really has a great combat system. You can find or purchase or steal various guns ranging from pistols to energy cell based weapons to even flamethrowers and of course there's a large variety of melee weapons as well. Weapons can be upgraded and modified by finding workstations and by finding or purchasing different mods for them, giving them a certain boost in areas such as rapid fire or even adding things like a scope. There's also a full armor system in the game as well including helmets and body armor which you can upgrade along in your quest. Along with that, there's something similar to the VAT system that was in Fallout 3. If you can't tell, Fallout 3 is my favorite Fallout in the franchise, known as TTD, or Tactical Time Dilation. By pressing a button, you can essentially slow down time in combat and target specific enemy parts while gaining information on them, such as their life or their health status. You can cripple them, you can blind them, and more based on what area you decide to target. Another nice feature in the Outer Worlds is the Companion System. Along your journey, you will encounter different NPCs, and some of these NPCs will want to join you on your quest, and you can decide whether or not to add them to your party, and if you do add them, they will accompany you on your missions. There's even a specific special attack for each companion that you have that can be accessed using the D-pad, so if you get in a bit of a bind, you can bust out that special attack. Of course, another facet of the Outer Worlds is character customization with the leveling system of the game. As you progress throughout the game, your character will start to level up, and you can divvy the points that you earn from leveling up in various metrics such as melee attacks, ranged weapon attacks, stealth, and speech. For my playthrough of the game, I decided to heavily upgrade my speech as I wanted to be able to both intimidate and persuade people, and I feel like it made for a better experience for me personally since, well I am a bit of a slick talker in real life. Besides that, you can unlock various perks for your character as well, such as improving your TTD recharge time or increasing your overall health. Your companion characters will also level up as well, and while you can't do things like tinker with their skills, you can assign them perks much like you can the main character in the game, so if you want to give them a little more health or you want to gain more XP when they kill an enemy, you could do that via the perk system. One thing I really liked about The Outer Worlds was that you could kill anyone in the game that you wanted to and it would transform the story. And when I say anyone, I literally mean anyone. Certain characters in Fallout 3 couldn't be killed because they were crucial to the story, but in The Outer Worlds the story will just change. For example, rather early in the game I was playing a mainline story mission, and I needed to acquire something that cost 10,000 bits, which is in-game currency used, and it was really taking me a while to do it. Only one person had this item for sale, and just for the hell of it, I decided to shoot them, and well, they ended up dying but didn't have the item on them that I needed. After running back to my ship because everyone was attacking me, my mission changed, and instead of buying that item, I was sent to a planet I hadn't been to in order to acquire a way to circumvent needing that item, and when I landed on that planet, I was quickly destroyed by higher level monsters that took me out. Suffice to say, I started up another file of my save game. The amount of freedom you have in this game is literally absolutely insane, which makes me keep wanting to do the various side quests because even those have multiple outcomes as well. It's a game that you can play in a myriad of different styles, either helping people or harming people, and it actually impacts the main story and the side missions of the game as well, which is just fantastic. Even one of the first missions you encounter in the game has you making a choice, and that choice will impact either one place or another place that you have already visited, and it will change how the rest of the game plays out. It's just brilliant stuff. Now I've heard that you can get through the main story of the game in about 20 hours or so if you avoid most of the side quests, but to me that seems like you're depriving yourself of how the game is really meant to be played, because of how rewarding and bizarre some of these side quests can be. Even taking into account all the side quests and the main story quests, the fact that the game encourages multiple playthroughs because of how the story will transform based on your actions makes it a game that has insanely high amount of replay value. There's no right or wrong way to do a mission, it's how you feel like playing out that mission, which I absolutely love in this game. 
The Nintendo Switch version of The Outer Worlds isn't the prettiest game on the console, and honestly, it could use a little bump in terms of things like sharpness with some of the textures, but honestly, I became obsessed with this game after a while with it. I kept wanting to explore more, find more secrets, discover more areas, find more characters with stories to tell and missions to give me. What would start out as a 30 minute play session just to record some footage would quickly turn out into a 4 hour binge and I just can't stop playing this game. And yes, if you have an Xbox One you can get the game for free on Game Pass or pick it up on the PS4, but if you only own a Nintendo Switch and have been craving a proper Fallout experience on the platform, I still feel like this game is worth picking up at the full price of $59.99. Having the Outer Worlds in your hands at any time, whether you're home or away, is a great feeling, and considering the amount of content packed in this game, you're not going to get bored anytime soon if you enjoy the style of game. Alright, so those are my thoughts on the Outer Worlds for the Nintendo Switch. I'm definitely very obsessed with this game. I could have finished it, you know, in 20 to 25 hours if I just stuck with the main quest, but I didn't want to do that. I love playing side quests in games like this, and some of these side quests are so well written with so many twists and turns, and the fact that you can sort of control the outcome of it just makes it so much fun to me, and I love going through and playing all these side quests. I'm going to be playing this game for quite a while because I just love the amount of freedom that you have within the game and I think that's what makes this game a very special game and considering there's not many games like this at all on the Nintendo Switch it definitely has a place on the system so let me know in the comments section down below what you think of the Outer Worlds on the Nintendo Switch are the graphics a bit too downgraded for you to enjoy the game are you going to pick it up on other platforms have you already picked it up on other platforms or have you been waiting for the Switch version of the game like myself and as always guys thank you for checking out this video if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications be sure to check out other videos on the channel as well and as always always I'll catch you guys on the next one later